welcome back to my channel, The Medieval Reader. So today I am filming part two of my bookshelf tour. So whereas last time most of the books that I showed I have not read because I donate most of the books I read, today I'm going to be mostly talking about books that I have read, particularly because these works are in French and French works, after I've read them, I keep them because I know that I will be going back to them. And most of these books belong to the French canon, so these are certainly works I will be revisiting in the future. Some of these are available in English, others are not. Unfortunately, I cannot tell you off the bat which ones are and which ones are not. Um, so, you know, put it into Goodreads or Google to figure out whether there's an English version available. All right, let's begin. Now on my shelves, I have th my French works in loose chronological order, so by centuries. My first books are on the Middle Ages, Renaissance, and then my last books were written in the 20th and 21st centuries. So that's how they are on my shelves. But here I just have stacks of books. So this these books are not in any chronological order, as you will see. I'll just pick one up and talk about it. I have La Cité des Dames by Christine de Pizan. This is translated as the City of Ladies. And um, Christine de Pizan was a 15th century uh, poet. She wrote the City of Ladies as a way of defending uh, female intelligence and also countering the misogyny that she was experiencing from certain male scholars, particularly male scholars who were defending the Romance of the Rose the very misogynistic parts of the Romance of the Rose. All right, the next book is uh, Les Regrets, Les Antiquités de Rome, and Défense et Illustration de la Langue Française by Joachim Dubelet. I've talked about Dubelet recently uh, when I made my video talking about my favorite books of 2019 so far. Dubelet was a Renaissance poet of the first half of the 16th century. He was part of what was known as the Pléiad. Um, and his colleague was Ronsard, whom I haven't read yet, but I really do need to. I have the complete works of Louise Labbé, another 16th century poet, um, and she also wrote sonnets in the Petrarchan tradition. Les Juives, or the Jews, but women Juive, so the female Jews, by Robert Garnier. Um, when I first heard that we were assigned this book, I thought, oh, the anti-Semitism is going to be very apparent. But actually, this is a beautiful play, and I would definitely recommend it. Another Renaissance poet. Ponte Cruel by Rabelais. Um, in my first video, I showed uh, Le Tiers Livre and Le Quart Livre, which are the third and fourth books in this four-part um, series of books on two giants, Gargantua and Ponte Cruel. Ponte Cruel is the second book, the first one being Gargantua. I don't know if it's on the pile here, maybe it's still back. On my shelves. So, in one of these videos, I will be talking about the Gargantua. Amour et Baiser by Isaac Haber. Now, this one I haven't read. I got this at Half Price Books for very, very cheap. Um, this is a Baroque poet, so I think late 16th century. Le Petit Prince by Antoine de Saint Exupéry, my favorite book of all time. Clégès by Crétin de Troyes. Crétin de Troyes is the father of the Arthurian romances. He is the father of the Grail legend having written Perceval, and Cliges is one of his lesser known um, romances, his most famous being Lancelot or the Knight in the Court, and Perceval. Saint Grand Odd by Paul Claudel. Um, I really love his poetry. Unfortunately, his political views were uh, far from enlightened. He was a fan of Mussolini but I do love his poetry and so when I saw this again at Half Price Books I snatched it up and I have no regrets. This is a beautiful collection. La Grammaire est une chanson douce by Eric Orsena. Eric Orsena I believe is in the Académie Française. Oh actually he does say he's in the Académie Française. He writes about grammar and linguistics and this is a fable. You'll see that there is art illustrations in it. And it's basically this island where there are letters and these children are experiencing or learn, you know, it's kind of a, yeah, it's a fable about language. Children will enjoy the story, but adults will, of course, appreciate the 
deeper meaning of the story. And I actually enjoyed it. Read it uh, for my master's program. Le Degré Zéro de l'Écriture by Roland Barthes. So Roland Barthes was a 20th century um, theorist, wrote about language and myth, um, and one of these essays was on my master's exam, so I have the entire collection. I do want to read his work, Mythology or Mythologies, uh, which I was introduced to in a media studies class that I took my senior year of undergrad, and it was entirely in French, and it really introduced me to visual rhetoric. Um, and just thinking about language as performative as well. So anyway, this is Roland Barthes. Okay, the next one is L'Amour, La Fantasia by Asia Jabbar. Uh, here's a francophone author, um, so Algerian, which is really nice. Um, most of these works that I will show you are either, are, are white, okay? Um, so this is a good one. La Reclusion Solitaire by Tar Benjolun. It's a poem. I just liked it. I might give it away. I don't think I will ever be revisiting it, so I might actually donate this. Une Tempête by Aimé Césaire, which is um, a retelling of The Tempest, William Shakespeare's Tempest, told from the perspective of the slave Caliban. And Aimé Césaire is um, Martinique. He's from Martinique. And he's one of the leading writers in the Necriture movement. So here's another non-white author. Nadja by André Breton. I wish I could donate this book. I really don't like it. But it is on my PhD exam, so I have to keep it. It's this really postmodern experimental work written by a guy who was not a pleasant person. So anyway. Le Futur by Villiers de Lille Adam. Now, it is true that this book tends to be a bit misogynistic, but it is super interesting. So this was written in the 19th century, and it deals with an android. So it's, it's science fiction, and I really, really enjoyed it, especially for the questions that it raises about um, humanity and language. And yeah, so I, there is an English translation of this, I know. Notre Dame de Paris by Victor Hugo. Have not read. I started it, and then I put it down, but this is on my PhD list, so I need to read it. And this is the time to do it, when I have just time on my hands to read large books. Le Roman Experimental by Emile Zola. I really do want to read the entire Rougon Macquart series. Um, Zola is a very, very important 19th century uh, author. He is compared to Balzac. Les Faux Monnayeurs by André Gide. Um, André Gide wrote one of my favorite French works, uh, La Symphonie Pastorale or the Pastoral Symphony. Now this one is pretty interesting, um, and yeah, so I'll just leave it at that. Beckett by Jean Henri. I picked this up because this was written before Murder in the Cathedral by T.S. Eliot, which was one of my favorite books, I think it was 2015, 2016, I forget. So I got this. It's a, it's a play about Thomas Beckett, but I haven't read it, so um, I want to read this soon. Le Nœud de Bille Vipère by François Mauriac. Uh, François Mauriac was a uh, Catholic author, 20th century, wrote novels that deal with religion in some way, but they're also experimental in their own way. La Nausée or the Nausea by Jean-Paul Sartre. Uh, I have actually read this book about five times, and while I don't entirely love it, it is so fascinating that I keep rereading it, so... Sartre is like that. It's like, I disagree with him vehemently, but he's a beautiful writer, so. Sous le soleil de Satan uh, by Georges Bernanos. Uh, the Diary of a Country Priest uh, was one of my favorite books of the last few years. Actually, it was my favorite book of one of those years. And so I decided to get Under the Sun of Satan um, because it was available for cheap. So, of course, I was going to buy it. And there are these editions with these weird, again, it's like my Rabelais books where it's like pink on the edges. I'm not a fan, but whatever. Le Docteur Pascal by Emile Zola. Okay, so here's my Balzac. I have Le Père Goriot, Le Colonel Chabert, which is my favorite Balzac, that's a novella, and La Recherche de l'Absolu, and La Peau de Chagrin. I made a whole video on Balzac, which I'll link below. Le Rouge et le Noir by Stendhal. I believe this was my favorite book of 2018. Uh, the Red and the Black. Love Julien Sorel. Really a messy, complicated, 
character, but I find him very relatable. Don't know what that says about me, but really love this book. Histoire du Chevalier des Crieux by the Abbe Prévost. It's also known as Manon Lescaut. For all of you YA readers out there who wonder whether classics can ever be as entertaining as YA that's published today, this is absolutely worth reading. You will love it. It's a romance. It's it's angsty, but it's like so much happens. It's fast paced, very much a page turner, um, written in the 18th century. Definitely recommend Manon Lesco. Uh, so here is the name. I want to make sure that you guys get that. The Calais Affair by Voltaire. Uh, this includes a lot of the writings that he wrote against um, religious extremism. Um, I, I think that Voltaire is definitely worth reading today despite not being the most likable philosopher. Speaking of an unlikable philosopher, uh, yeah, I do not like Rousseau, but this is his Confessions, volume one. Oh boy, do not like Rousseau. Voltaire would agree. All right. Lettres Persanes by Montesquieu. Phenomenal, phenomenal book. Um, written in the 18th century, so it's an enlightenment uh, work. It deals with, um, these are, it's an epistolary novel about two Persians, an uncle and his nephew, who are traveling in France. And so it ends up being a commentary on the French, but it's also much more complicated than that. All of the characters are flawed, um, particularly Uzbek, who is the uncle. And I think this book is definitely worth reading. Diderot. Diderot is famous for his encyclopedia. He's an Enlightenment philosopher and is considered one of the first open atheists uh, in the West. Um, I mean, there were others, but Diderot is very famous for actually being an atheist, whereas Voltaire was a deist. Diderot's philosophy and his philosophical views are really hard to categorize, but I do like some of the questions that he explores. His plays, however, are terrible. They're, they're really just bad, okay? Like, the plot is just crazy and um, they make no sense. I understand what he's going for, but the stories are not worth reading. Like, I'm gonna be honest, Diderot is one of those people you read purely for philosophical purposes. You would not want to read his plays. Just dip in and out of the encyclopedia is my suggestion. Le Jeu de l'Amour et du Hasard by Marie Vaux. I think this is one of the first videos that I made on booktube. I will link it below if I find it. La Double Inconstance, also by Marie Vaux. Um, I think he's 18th century. Um, it's Comédie Française, uh, which is the French version of the Comédie de l'Arte la, in, in Italy. Um, so there is a clown named um, Arlequin, Harlequin, and it's slapstick. And I, I find slapstick quite interesting. It's not some, it's not my favorite type of comedy, but it really works in Marivo. Fedre by Racine. If you want a brilliant, brilliant um, neoclassical writer, definitely recommend Racine, seventeenth century. Um, this is a play. Fedre would be translated as Phaedrus. Definitely worth reading. Andromaque by Racine. Have not read, but I think I have to read it for the PhD exam. I think. The Fables of Jean de La Fontaine. Jean de La Fontaine uh, basically rewrote Aesop fables in verse. The most famous being Le Corbeau et le Renard, The Crow and the Fox, a poem that all the French evidently learn in school and have to memorize. Corneille's Le Cid. The Cid. This was very uh, controversial when it came out in the 17th century because it broke some of the rules that um, playwrights had set about what is realistic to an audience. Um, very similar was the term uh, vraisemblable. Uh, I really like it. I think this is really good. The Princesse de Clèves by Madame de Lafayette, Nicolas Sarkozy. <laughs> So it made some disparaging remarks about this book, and then there was this huge national read-in. There were read-ins um, all over France afterward to celebrate this book. And it's nice. It's a, it's a romance, and I actually like this romance. So yes, I think I made a video about it. Zaid by Madame Lafayette. Oh, <laughs> let's cover up the breasts. 
Uh, I, oh, yes, I think I made a video about both of these works by Madame de Lafayette. The Heptameron by Marguerite de Navarre. Marguerite de Navarre, Renaissance poet. Well, mostly playwright. And, like, she wrote novellas. Kind of in the tradition of Boccaccio. Um, patron of various reformed and evangelical writers. She was the sister of Francis I. Yes. Melusine by Jean d'Arras. So we're moving back to the Middle Ages. This is a 14th century uh, romance. Yeah, and there's there's a there's a dragon in it, so it's definitely worth reading for the dragon. The Fabio of the Middle Ages. Um, these are like the most inappropriate works you will ever read of the Middle Ages. They are inappropriate, scatological, sexual, just. But they're funny. They're funny. Okay, that's the point. The Knight in the Cart, I mentioned this already by Chrétien de Troyes. The Song of Roland, 11th century. Urika, um, yeah, I don't know if this book has aged very well, but it is um, opposed to slavery. Lettre de Mistress Henley, so the letters of Mistress Henley is written by Isabelle de Carrière. Yeah, this was very, very short. It's epistolary. Paul et Virginie, this is an interesting, somewhat utopian celebration of nature, kind of like Rousseau, except this is an interesting story. Um, I, I, I liked it. It's, it's cute. The Romance of the Rose. Okay, I've talked about this a lot here. I have all three volumes of Montaigne's essays. The first novel in French that I ever read from cover to cover, La Tristesse du Cerf Volant by Françoise Malégeri, which would be translated as The Sadness of the Kite. It's just phenomenal to me. There is really like the most unknown French work you could have possibly imagined. I think it's out of print, but I saw it at the library in my high school and I thought, this will be a place to start. I will read this book cover to cover. First time I read it, I understood 20% and I've read it multiple times since. I will never ever part with this book. I bought this edition, by the way, okay. And then I have three works by Eric Emmanuel Schmidt, who is so delightful. He writes stories that, um, kind of have moral message. They can deal with religion as well. Um, and I read uh, Oscar and Adam Rose, or Oscar and the Woman in Pink. Um, my French teacher in high school gave it to me uh, to borrow, and I absolutely loved it. So I have three more books by him. Now, I haven't read these. I have Monsieur Ibrahim et les Fleurs du Coran. So Mr. Um, Ab Abraham, I guess, and the Flowers of the Coran. They do Monsieur de Bruxelles, the two um, gentlemen of Brussels. And La Femme au Miroir, the woman in the mirror. So yes, those are my French books. Uh, there might be a few still left, um, but I will do that in the next video. I hope that this was interesting. Let me know if you've read and loved any of these books, or if you disliked any of these books. And I will talk to you later. Bye now.